Yo, what up guys? This is Sticky Fishy Fishing. In this video, I'll show you how I like to make float for Luderick, also known as Blackfish. There's many ways and styles how to make them and different kinds of paint jobs. This is just the way that I like to make them for the style of fishing that I do. So, okay guys, check it out. Alright guys, going to make some floats for Luderick. What I use is 6mm Dow Rod which I pick up from Bunnings in metre lengths. I used to use fiberglass rod, but I can't seem to get none anymore, which is a lot stronger. So now I just use Dow, 6 mil Dow. And for the float bit, I use balsa wood, 20 mil by 20 mil. And just need a knife to shape it, or a Stanley knife, some sandpaper to shape it, bit of super glue to glue it to the stem, a bit of tape when you paint it. And I've got some grey undercoat primer paint here to undercoat it first. And then I go over it with some black paint. And then I use white, gloss white and fluoro orange to paint the top stem bit that sticks out the water to see. And just got a hacksaw blade to cut it up, measuring tape. And some heat shrink to put the eyes on the float that you run your line through. And I just use... Uh, some hooks to make the eyes for my float. I just chop it off there and I just use the stem bit there and bend it in half. You can use wire, bend over a bit of wire, but I just find that stronger and it makes it look a lot cleaner. They're just cheap dollar packet hooks from Kmart, so I just get them and just cut them up. But I'll show you when I go anyway. All right, let's get started and make a few. All right, with the Dow rod, I usually cut it in the 40 centimeter lengths when I make floats for fishing off the rocks because I like a bigger top on it, sticking out the water in the rough water. But if I make um, floats with a break wall, I'll just make it in 25 centimeter, 30 centimeter lengths. But I'm going to make a few rock ones for fishing off the ocean rocks since it's coming up to our Ludric season. So I'll just cut it in the 40 centimeter lengths. Just mark that there. 40 centimeters. Get a hacksaw blade to cut it. Helps if you got the full hacksaw blade with the handle, but I can't find mine, so I'm just using that. But there we go, that's a 40 centimeter length there. All right, so then I get me stem, me 40 centimeter stem, me balsa wood. I've already got that pre drilled, you'll have to drill a hole through that. And then I just slide that through to where I want it. Just like that. I usually have it about there so I've got plenty of stems sticking out the water for when I'm fishing. And then I just have a smaller bottom. Some people like to have a same size top and bottom so it's balanced. But because I fish shallow water sometimes, I just have a little bottom on it. So then I can have a shallow rig underneath it. It's a little bit top heavy, but the weight that I put on it, it still works fine. All right, once you got that on there, I like to shape it before I glue it into position. All right, guys, now I've got the balsa wood on the stem. I just like to shape it up a bit. Just tape it down the bottoms. You can have it any shape you like. Balsa wood, wood's pretty uh, soft, so you can sand it down pretty easy too. 
and then I start off with a 40 grid sandpaper, a real rough one. Makes it easier just to get that bit of shape at the start. And then I'll go over it with a smoother one later. Then what you do is you just sand it to the shape you want. As you can see there, that takes it off pretty quick. But it doesn't take long, look at that, like, that's already round. That's pretty good, you don't need nothing fancy. That was just with the 40 grid. And then I go up to some 180 grid, which is real smooth. And that's just to smooth it off. Alright guys, there's the end result. That's how I like to shape mine up. Nice and thin because bolts is real buoyant so you need a bit of weight to weigh that down. But that should be perfect. That will do the job just fine. Now what you want to do is cut the shank off one of these hooks. Or just make up your own eyelets out of wire if you want. But I just prefer to use these. So I just cut the shank off the hook. Just like that one there. Just cut it down as far as you can. Be careful when you do this, make sure you got glasses or something on because you do not want it to fling up in your eye. Then you just cut it with the pliers. Even if you got glasses on, I still put a bit of paper or rag over it so it doesn't fly and hit you in the head or something. But there we go there. Got our two eyelets cut, ready to go. Alright guys, then you've got to bend this eyelet wire in half so it's like an L shape. Like this one that i got here that I've already done. You can use pliers to do it, but what I do is i got this bit of wood here and I drill a little hole in the edge. Just enough for the wire to fit in. Like that, and then i put it in there. i grab the pliers. And then I bend it over. Just like that. Alright, now I've got the two eyelets ready, bent over. Now I'm going to glue the um, balsa wood on before I forget. Just do a bit of super glue. Just make sure you mark it. I've got me mark there. Put a bit of super glue on, slide it back down before it dries to your mark, and there we go, that's good, she's ready to go. And then I put a little bit around the top here, just to seal that top bit. But it's not going to move anyway. Put a little bit around the bottom. Alright, once we've done that. Got the foam glued on. We've bent our hook hangers. What you need next is a bit of this heat shrink. I used the heat shrink to uh, put the eyelets on.
So cut a couple of bits of that off. All right, once you've got your bit of heat shrink cut, slide it over the top of your float. This is six mil heat shrink too. So it's nice and tight. And then I just slide me oil it down in there. Make sure you got it straight and all the way to the bottom. And then hit it with the old lighter. It's better if you got a um, hot air gun, a heat gun I meant. Let that cool down. Also put a little bit of super glue down in the hole behind it. Then let it cool. Alright, that's solid. That's all good. Alright, once you've put your top one on, put your bottom bit of heat shrink on, get your eyelet. Thread that in there. Just like that. All right, thread the bottom one on just like that. Make sure you can get it as straight as you can, lined up. About there, that's all right. And hit it with the lighter. <coughs> Bit of glue down the back. Let that cool off. Alright, once you've got your eyelets on and the float shaped, she's ready to go. Next thing you got to do is just give it a paint job. But it's late in the afternoon and the sun ain't out, so I'm going to wait till tomorrow till the sun comes out and I'll show you the paint job that I do on it. Alright guys, it's the next day and we're going to do the paint job. There's the one that I built yesterday. It's all finished off, ready to go. And I also built a small one this morning that I'm going to paint up as well so then I got a big one and a little one all right let's get the painting all right guys got one hanging up there and one hanging up there just on a bit of wire just going to start off with some gray primer give them an undercoat Just a light coat. You don't want to put too much paint on it to start. You just want to give it a light coat so it sticks. And go back over it later. Alright, that'll be alright for that one for now. Do the little one. Alright, there's the little one done. And the big one. Let me put a bit more there. Alright, let them dry. And then we'll put a bit more paint on it. Alright, gonna do another coat of primer that's dried.
all right let that dry and then uh we'll finish off painting it with some other colors all right guys the primer's dried so now i'm gonna paint the stem bit white with some gloss white and this is how i get the color pattern that i do so you just want to do the stem white doesn't matter if you get a bit of white on the other bit because that's going to end up being black all right we've done the white let that dry and we'll give it another coat all right going to give it another coat of white that's looking all right let that dry for a while all right guys got the stems painted white they came up good there's the little one now i just got to move on to the next step of painting all right guys now we got the stems painted white i'm just going to use some scotch blue 18 mil painting tape i've got a few little bits here ready and i'm just gonna cover the bits that i want to keep white just put it on just like that and then when i take that off that's going to be white Just gotta put it try to put it on straight so you get straight edges. Just like that. So then I'll paint the rest of it black and when I take the tape off we're going to have white lines and then the end bit there I'm going to paint orange. So I'll just cover this bit up here then I'm going to paint orange so I don't get no black on that. Just roll a bit of tape around that. Paint the orange bit last. All right, now we're ready to go. We spray the whole float black and all that will go black where it's white. Then when we take the blue off, we'll have white strips with an orange top. All right, we've got the big one taped up and then I just done the little one. And now we're gonna spray them black. All right, just got some gloss black paint here. All right, let's give them a coat. Just give them a light coat to start. All right, they'll be all right to start off on the big one. Give the little one a light coat. All right, I just gave the little one a light coat and the big one a light coat. Just wait for that to dry and then I'll give it another coat and they should be ready to go. All right, gonna give these floats a second coat of black. We've already gave them one coat. Give the little one a coat. All right, there's the second coat. All right, they look good, I'll let that dry off. All right, guys, I've gave the floats two coats of black paint now, so they're all done. Now the next thing I've got to do is put some orange on the tips just to finish them off. So I'll just take this tape off. Just like that. 
where that white is there, I'm going to paint orange. So just the tips of them are orange. Alright, so I'm going to paint that bit orange, but I don't want to get any orange there on the black bits in the middle. So I'm going to put a bit of tape over that. Nothing too fancy, just cover that up. I've already got a bit of tape there where it's going to finish. So I'll just whack that on like that. Alright, that's taped up, ready to go. Now just paint the tip of it orange. It's good if you got white there first because then it makes the orange stand out more. You don't really want to be trying to paint the orange over black. So you better have them white there if you can. Alright, so we've got some fluoro orange here. To do these end bits. Just give them a light coat first. Just like that. You see there, if you go over to white, it stands out heaps bright. And that's what you want. All right, let that dry. And then we'll hit it with one more coat and it should be fine. All right, guys, gonna give it a second coat of orange. Let it dry for a while. This will be the final coat. All right, there we go there, nice orange top on them. Just gotta wait for that to dry now. All right guys, got the float painted. Now I just gotta take this tape off. Alright, there we go, there's the finished float, you can see how it left the white lines and the orange tip, stands out good in the water, came out pretty good, there's the little one I done, came out awesome, that's going to be my break wall float and the big one's going to be my ocean rock float. Off the break wall you only need a little bit sticking out because it's going to be calm water. But off the rocks you want a bit more sticking out so when it gets a bit of current and it pulls it down a bit. You float ain't under the water all the time. But they turned out pretty good. Not too bad at all. You can just leave them like that or you can put a clear coat over them now to protect your paint. And that's what I'm going to do. You don't really need to, but if you put a clear coat over them, they just last a little bit longer. And if you go through the effort of doing a paint job like this, you're better off uh, spending the time to put a bit of clear on them. Alright guys, so now I'm just going to put a clear coat over them just to protect the paint job I did. You don't really need to, but after going this far, you might as well put a clear over it. Just stop it from scratching so easy on the rocks. Alright, there we go. Got a clear coat on it. And the big one, clear coat on the small one. And once that dries, they're ready for action. You can also get some clear epoxy too and paint over the top of it if you want. Especially to make the cork bit a bit harder so they don't smash on the rocks. If you want to do that, sometimes I do that, but I find just a clear coat, it's alright. They last a fair while. Alright guys, the floats are done. They're ready to fish lift. They turned out pretty good. Got the small one there for the rock wall, and the bigger one there for the ocean rocks. So, they turned out pretty good with that paint job. That's the usual paint job I do. If you don't want to do that paint job because it takes a bit of time, you can just go with the standard paint job just like that one just black with a bit of orange on the tip or just paint the whole top bit orange works just as good 
Here's a couple of old ones that I found in the shed, which is good, so I didn't have to make as many that I was gonna. So they're still good to fish with. So I found four there in the shed and a couple of new ones that I made in the video, which worked out good. So they're ready for fishing. Hopefully we can get a few this season. Okay guys, if you like this video, hit the like button, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Cheers. Sticky fishing fishing.